Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Comic-Con 2022. I've got the entire team behind Vampire Academy with me right now. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are going to dig into the show. But Julie, I'm asking you a selfish question first because I am one of the world's biggest Scream fans. And I know you worked on Scream 2 back in the day. So even though that was so long ago and you've had so much experience since, is there anything that you picked up on that set you still find influencing your work as a yeah. producer today? Absolutely. Two things. Things, and I'll tell you the first, and then you tell me if you want to hear the second. Otherwise, I might be talking too long. But the one thing I learned from Wes Craven, who um, I was I started as his assistant on the movie Scream and then oh. worked for him during Scream 2, is that Wes really believes that your crew and the people making your project are your community, and they are to be cherished and protected, and they are to be brought along from job to job, um, and they are to be invited to your table and your you know Thanksgiving, and, and that it is, if we're going to work this hard and put as much as we have into this art and this commerce, like why not, why not hold each other close and, and be good people? I love that. I think every single Slay. person out there should apply that to their project. All right. Now for the reason we actually are here. Julie, you obviously have a good deal of experience making vampire series. <laughs> so is there any particular thing about the way you go about making these shows that stayed consistent from Vampire Diaries to here? But then also, what is something specific about Vampire Academy that called for you to do something new? I would say the thing that is most consistent about the way I personally tell stories um, vampire stories specifically is and it is controversial for true lovers of genre and horror but I don't approach the story uh, as a genre story I don't approach it as horror I don't approach it as anything other than what it is thematically and emotionally in its purest form which in um, you know Vampire Diaries was about you know trying to survive a deep grief and in uh, the originals was about trying to you know recover uh, and repair the scars of, a, of, of abuse and child and, and a, and a dysfunctional broken family legacies it's about wanting to you know um if you looked at as an outsider how can you find the power within that and actually grow into your own hero um and vampire academy is very much uh what it means to bond together with those you love the most uh and then make the change you want to see in the world. I love that answer so, so much. So, Marguerite, for you now, I've really enjoyed seeing the evolution of your career from actor to like full producing force and writing right now. So was that something you always knew that you were drawn to? Or is there anything particular about Vampire Diaries that sparked that interest in you? You know what? I always had written, but I was, as Julie calls me, I was a secret writer because I'd always sort of followed the flow of, of my career and I was happily and luckily acting and it was keeping me busy but I was always writing and then when I moved to LA some two of my best friends were Liz Tiglar and this woman and they were two of the greatest champions and saying you're a writer too let's 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 do what we can with this and they were so supportive so I really got very lucky these women were kind and good to me so they helped me see this world as a possibility because I you know I lived in New York I thought of plays and stuff I was like oh writing for TV is like being able to explore deeply these characters over time it was so satisfying to me so it was a wonderful transition um, and as far as vampires I do <laughs> to as a uh, not a super genre person except that for the for what it gives us i mean i love vampires who doesn't love a vampire but it gives us the ability to tell a story and metaphor that sometimes is not as easy to tell in in a certain kind of just raw truth yeah. and you can you can find deeper places and people can reach to that story and find places in themselves that are sometimes harder to reach when stuff is just you know it's not like reading a newspaper and talking about some issues it's actually being able to experience them emotionally through these beautiful characters it's what i love about genre really? so so much yeah. there's so many things that i've been able to process through genre storytelling that I can't just in my everyday life. And it's exactly. incredible. It's why we need stories like this. All right. So to find a more unique way to tap into all of your characters here, can you each tell me what you think their greatest asset is at the beginning of the show? Something that you would put in your back pocket and want to take with you. But then what is their biggest weakness? Something that maybe they need to overcome as season one progresses? Um, I would say for Rose, her greatest uh, asset strength and the same thing and that is her passion it leads her to do stupid things it leads her to do wonderful things and it's kind of the driving force when it comes to all of her decisions and particularly surrounding the ones that she loves 
Good answer. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> blue oh, tick from Julie Fleck. Oh my god. All right. How about for Alyssa? Yeah, this is actually such an interesting conversation. I had this conversation with Kieran, and he actually gave me this answer for Lissa. He was Can like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. He was like, you know, I think I think her compassion is her strength and can be her downfall as well. Mm. I mean, I think Lissa sometimes might trust people too much or almost go an extra mile when she really can't anymore. Mm. And I just think it's something in her that she she can't help it. I mean. She's just this compassionate person, and it's what makes their friendship so strong, too. So, That's a great, that is also a great answer. I don't know how yeah. I followed that. Um, <laughs> I think for Christian, I think his greatest strength in the beginning is his resilience and his independence. I mean, if you put myself, I know personally, in the shoes that he had to be put in, I don't think I'd come out as uh, hopeful as he did. And I, I'd say his greatest weakness is he builds a lot of walls around himself, and he doesn't let a lot of people in. But throughout the show, we get to see him meet certain people and have that be broken down a little bit. And I think that's something beautiful to watch. Don't mess this up, man. They're doing yeah. it. No, the, the pressure's on, right? Um, am I allowed to say that the strength and weakness are alike? Again, like C, like C said with Rose, for me, it was always Dimitri's devotion uh, in the sense of whatever he does, he's committed to. And I think at the start, we meet him uh, and that's a bit more rigid and disciplined towards his work. And in the end, his devotion to other things can sort of lead him into and away from himself, which brings us to his questions. Yeah. You all nailed it. A plus all around. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're making us look really talented and smart. <laughs> Just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Marguerite and Julie, you can probably both speak to this now. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do with this show to evolve the vampire subgenre a little? Because it was a different time when Vampire Diaries first started and the audiences, like they want the same, but they also want something different and more modern. So how can we see that applied to this show? Well, it's funny because the way we describe the show to people is that it is both ancient and modern at the same time. You can have an ancient castle and a burger stand down the street. <laughs> um, and that really applies to the way that we've... Uh, approach the 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 vampire lore itself which of course we pulled entirely from the books so mm. we don't get the credit for it but what Rochelle Mead did in the book series was created this really fascinating species of yeah. vampire called Moroi which is essentially what we call sort of the polite vampire so, the clean the civilized the you know the white tablecloth vampire the dainty elegant and you know unfortunately maybe a little bit too safe a little bit too posh, a little bit too Elitist, stuck in their ways, a little, little bit fancy. Yeah. Um, but it's been fun because that really is sort of a new take on that character but that, and that species. But we also get the Strigoi, who are this, this fierce, primal, almost zombie-esque, uh, ferocious and terrifying vampires who do feed on blood and will kill you <laughs> and will live forever because they are difficult to kill. So we get to kind of have a cake and eat it too. We get to pay lip service to all the great terrifying elements of the genre, but also have this kind of austere, interesting, mm, sophisticated okay. version. And of course it all becomes a class, you know, a allegory for class. Well, yeah, I mean, that was what was so appealing to reread those books now. I feel like now is the perfect time to tell them because it's a class system that is fraying at the edges and should because it's incredibly unfair. Mm -hmm. And so these two young women are waking up to that fact and saying, wait a minute, we didn't sign on to this. Is this fair? What do we do about it? And how it challenges their friendships because they're basically on you know, the opposite sides of the tracks, you know, for yeah. lack of a better term. And the other thing is in updating it, we were careful about certain things. We love these books. We're, we feel very passionate about the books and want to stay true to them. But we, you know, we didn't really want to have the teacher student relationship. So Rose and Dimitri, he is uh, not, he's maybe a mentor, but not a teacher. She's a little bit more of, you know, she's of age. There's there's a little bit of stuff we did with that. We're just being a little more careful because we recognize the time we're in and want to be, want to be uh, sensible about that. I love it. Those added layers, that's what keeps it on the mind. Well, after just experiencing the thrill in the moment, I can't wait to see more. Big congratulations to you all. Everybody out there, keep an eye out for Vampire Academy, the series. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Thank you. Thank you.